At the final round of the Botas Chess Invitational, I was playing against Linda Diaz, a professional singer from New York who also has played chess for a very long time. She was rated 1900, but she hadn't played a lot of classical chess the past 10 years, so I felt like my experience maybe would give me an edge this game. Now, I really needed to win this game because if I won, I would have a chance of getting tied third in the tournament, which would first be really cool, but secondly, it would give me $1,300, which would pay for my flight here. <laughs> so I really wanted to win this game. So we sat down by the board, we looked at each other and smiled, and we were talking about the bonfire we were gonna make in the evening, which is kind of a conversation I've never had with a chess opponent before. And then after that, we got into serious mode, we looked at each other, shook hands, and started the clock. So I played d4, and I was completely expecting her to play d5, but she played f5, and I knew that she had prepared against me, because she never plays this. So I had nightmares of my game against Alexandra Botas, where she completely outprepared me and just beat me and destroyed me, and it was horrible in the opening. So I thought, okay, I cannot let this happen. I need to play something that I never play. I typically play a gambit against the, this is called the Dutch opening. And the name of my gambit is the Staunton gambit. I love it. It goes e4, you sacrifice a pawn and get a lot of play. But I thought, okay, she must have prepared this. So I played knight c3, she played knight f6, and I played g3. And here she started thinking for a bit because I could tell that she wasn't expecting this, which made me feel very confident. So she played g6 after a while, and my first initial reaction to g6 was, okay, I should play h4. <laughs> like, h4, just push my h-pawn, this looks amazing. But I thought, okay, let me first play bishop g2, and then after she plays bishop g7, let me go h4. Now here I was expecting her to play something like d5 to prevent me from playing e4, which I thought was my idea, but she played c6, and now I spent like 40 minutes thinking because I was calculating both the move h5 and the move e4 for like so long, but I didn't really end up liking any of those moves um, at the end. But actually h5 is the best move and I was kind of worried about giving her a free pawn. That was the reason I didn't play it because I thought that if h5 she will go knight takes h5. And then after e4, I thought that this actually wasn't so clear at all. And I thought that, okay, if I play e4 immediately now, I wasn't sure exactly what happened after trading everything and her going d5. And then I thought, okay, the bishop maybe comes to d3, castles, and then I'll play h5. But I just, I thought that this position was very difficult to analyze. I didn't really want to enter it. So I ended up playing bishop g5 instead. And... This was a move where the idea was to trade the bishop for the knight, but the problem was that it also led to my b2 pawn becoming very weak. So she went queen a5, threatening my bishop, uh, sorry, threatening, uh, well actually not threatening anything, I just realized, <laughs> but she was kind of threatening to go for the move queen b4, and she's also right now maybe threatening to go knight e4 and pinning my knight on c3. So. Here I maybe could have played something like h5, h5 was always in the air and sacrificing the exchange but I needed to win this game and psychologically for me to like sacrifice a pawn or exchange was really difficult for me to do because I felt like there was so much at stake in this game. This would have been a random game where it didn't matter as much if I won or not, I would probably have played h5 and just kind of jolo it a little bit but there was a lot of stuff at stake. There was a third placement at stake. So I really didn't want to sacrifice anything if I wasn't 100% sure that I was winning. So here I played a move which wasn't the best and that was that I took on f6. I took the knight. And the idea was that after bishop takes, I wanted to play h5 without having to sacrifice any piece. Um, the problem now is that I don't have my bishop and actually my b2 pawn is very weak so she played queen before threatening both my b2 pawn and my d4 pawn and now i realize that okay i have some attack going on but she is gonna win a pawn which was exactly what i kind of wanted to avoid so i wasn't so happy in this position but i realized quickly that what i need to do to defend is that i need to play e3 and after she takes my pawn i need to play knight e2 to just keep everything defended and at least get my pieces out quickly 
And we see now in this position that Linda has an extra pawn, but her bishop and knight are completely undeveloped. And I actually have quite an attack going on. So in this position, she played queen a3 to get the queen out of the way. And now I probably played the idea that I am the most proud of in the whole tournament. I spent some time thinking here, and when I saw this idea, I was like, this looks crazy, this looks insane, but I truly think it's the best plan here. And I will play it, I don't care if it looks insane, if I believe in it, I gotta do it. And yeah, I'm just really happy that I played it, and well, I'll, I'll show it to you. So after she went queen a3, I took on g6, because I wanted to force her pawn to stay on g6, it's a weak pawn, but also I wanted to open up the h-file because I had the idea of going rook takes rook, bishop takes rook, and now, well, I want to play knight f4, but the problem is that my knight is hanging. I want to get my queen or my rook to the h-file, but the problem is that the king is covering that. So what do I do to solve both of these issues in one move? I play king d2. <laughs> And this to me looked like such a weird move. It almost felt like I was barn clouding in the middle of the game, but I just really believed in it. And well, this was Hammer's reaction, Grandmaster Hammer's reaction to when I played this move. Ooh, King, wow. King D2. And that was the computer's favorite move. Wow, Anna popularizing the cow, but here comes up with the Swedish bomb cloud. So after I went for king d2, I could tell that Linda hadn't really expected this move and she spent quite some time thinking. And I think she kind of panicked here because she saw that queen h1 is coming and I think she didn't really know exactly how to stop it. So she played the move e5. And I just think that this is such a practically easy game for me now. Um, so I was feeling really confident here. Like I thought I was gonna win really quickly after this point. So I played queen h1, putting my queen on the foul of the bishop. And now she spent some more time thinking and we started getting really close on time. She ended up playing bishop g7 and getting lower on time than me at this point. And I spent a little bit of time considering a few different options because I thought, okay, is there something that I can do to make my attack even better? And actually here my best move would have been d5, but I didn't spot this. Instead I went queen h7, threatening the bishop and pawn, which had been my initial plan with queen h1 anyways. And she played king f7, which I wasn't expecting whatsoever. I thought she was gonna bring her queen back. So when she played king f7, I just thought, okay, everything that I want right now is that I wanna get my knight up to f4 and threaten her g6 pawn. So let me just capture this pawn, also preventing her queen from going to d6 and then go knight f4. Now this position is extremely tricky and there's a lot of tactics here. So she played queen e7 and at first my idea was all the time to play knight f4, but I just thought that after queen takes pawn and queen takes g6 and king f8, I just thought that her queen and bishop would get very, very active and I didn't quite like this. But actually this is winning because after queen takes e5, I have the move knight c d5 and well, this is winning, but it's sacrificing a piece. And if I'm honest, I completely did not spot this during the game. So there was a really difficult piece sacrifice to spot and I didn't spot it. And yeah, it, it completely went out of my mind. I was sometimes looking at moves with bishop d5 check and things like this, but knight d5 in that moment completely slipped my mind. So I ended up not playing knight f4 because of this. And I ended up going for the move g4, which is definitely not the best move here, but I was really worried about her playing d6. So I played g4, she won d6, and now I took on d6, and this was also a mistake. I should have gone knight f4, but once again, I completely missed with this idea with knight d5. And actually this position is only completely winning for me because I have this idea with knight c d5 sacrificing my piece. And I, I didn't understand that, especially here because she has bishop e6. So I completely didn't understand that and I missed that idea. So now the tables were turning and I was losing my advantage. And after takes and takes, I went king a1 to play rook d1. I wanted to activate my rook. And after she went knight a6, I was able to go rook d1. And after she played queen f6, I once again had a winning position 
with a move that I didn't spot, and that was knight b5. <laughs> and, I mean, knight b5 is just such an insane idea. Um, my mom didn't spot this whatsoever, and she told me after that this was an impossible idea to spot, but yeah, the idea of knight b5 is that I'm giving away my knight, but I have this crazy move g5, giving away another pawn, and after she takes, I have bishop d5 check, and after king, well, after bishop e6, it's apparently going to be almost a checkmate. So after takes and then I take the bishop on g7, it's going to be almost a checkmate. So yeah, it was a really crazy idea to spot. I didn't see this whatsoever. So I just played king f1 to get my king out of any trouble with uh, queen takes c3. I thought maybe at some point I want to play knight f4 and then I don't want to have her be able to play queen takes c3 with check. This was a miss and now the tables had turned. It was equal. We almost had the same time. I had five minutes on the clock. She had nine. And we were both really stressed at this point. So she ended up playing bishop e6, which was a really good move. And I took on f5. And now after she took back, her idea was to play rook h8. Now here I spotted a really nice idea, which was to go knight e4, threatening the queen. I saw this, but the reason I didn't do this was because I thought that after bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop. Um, I thought that after she goes rook h8, I missed that I have the move rook d7 check. So I completely just missed this. Um, and yeah, that was that was the reason I didn't play it. So that would have been my best chance. I didn't see that. And instead I played queen h2, which was to get my queen out of the way from rook h8. But yeah, now the game was very balanced and the result could be anything. So she played rook d8, which was the best move. And... I went rook d4. The idea was that I wanted to cause a little bit of trouble. We both had little time. We had two minutes left on the clock. So I wanted to just kind of stress her out. Um, and I thought, okay, she goes with something like bishop takes c2. I can go rook f4. But she took my rook. I took with the knight. And then she played the best move in this position, which was bishop takes. Well, no, first she went queen e5. And now after I went queen h4, she went bishop takes c2, which is a beautiful move. Because if I take now, she's just going to take my knight on c3, and then my position will be terrible. So here, I was freaking out, and I, well, I wasn't really freaking out, to be honest, I was feeling pretty confident with the little time. I was really happy about the fact that we both were playing a bullet game, because the good thing about me always getting low on time is that I feel really confident when I have 30 seconds left on the clock, but I think I give a heart attack to everybody watching. But... I played bishop h3 here and it was at this moment that my mom started saying on the stream that I was gonna lose the game and she was telling everyone sorry <laughs> and I rem I rewatched this and I was like oh no mom don't say this <laughs> but my mom I completely lost all faith in me at this point because she has this move knight c5 which is just uh well at first bishop d3 check which she played and after king g1 she has the move knight c5 just regrouping all of the pieces However, she played queen f6. I have to keep the queens here, so I went queen g3. And now she played bishop c4, and this was the moment the tables turned. Chat was going crazy, my mom was going crazy, everybody was going crazy because she had just blundered a piece due to the move knight e4, which I played instantly. I'm threatening her queen, and I'm threatening knight d6 check. And I was so excited when I saw this because I realized that I've probably won the game. And after knight e4, you could tell that Linda had realized also the mistake. And yeah, she was probably pretty upset at this point. So she played queen e5. And now I played knight d6 check. King e7. And in this point, I was considering just taking on c4. But then I found this really nice move, which is actually the best move in the position. And which my mom didn't spot. She was going like, please, Anna, take on c4. Please, Anna, take on c4. And then I went queen takes g6 and almost gave her a heart attack. But this is actually the best move in the position because the idea is that if she takes my knight, I can go knight f5 check and this is a fork. And there's like no moves that Linda can do right now. It's a really bad position. And let's say she plays something like bishop uh, g8. I can simply go knight f5 check or I can go knight takes b7. And it's just a really, really, really strong position. So in this position, she ended up going queen f6. I went knight f5 check. She went king d8. And here I had 40 seconds left. And I was considering going queen e8 check. And I could tell that it probably would be a checkmate. 
But because I couldn't find the checkmate, I wanted to make sure that I didn't mess this up when I had 40 seconds. And I thought, okay, I know that if I trade queens, I will win this endgame. Like, that is a guaranteed win. So I decided that instead of going for the checkmate in seven, which I couldn't calculate in 40 seconds, I decided to just do the practical decision of trading queens, taking the bishop, and then playing out this endgame. And, well, she played, after I took the bishop, she won b5, I won knight a5, she won c5, and I was feeling really confident here. The only thing that I didn't want was that I didn't want her to be able to get my two pawns and for me to play a knight and bishop versus king, because even though I know the checkmate, it's stressful. <laughs> it's very stressful to play knight and bishop versus king. So that was the only thing, I wanted to win with my pawns. So I went knight d6, she went knight b4, I took her pawn, she went a6, I checked her on b7, and then I took I went knight a3 because she couldn't defend her pawn on c5 really. So after she took my pawn on a2, I took on c5, and then we played this endgame where, well, she went a5, and I realized that I wanted to get my knight to c4 and my other knight to a4. So after she played bishop c3, I started out by playing f4 and starting pushing my pawns. After she threatened my knight on c5, I went knight a4, and I was really happy about this because now her A pawn cannot push and I can basically just start pushing the E and F pawns. Now I realized in this endgame that it would be a lot easier if I traded off one of her pieces, either the bishop or knight, because then she would have less pieces to defend with. So after she won knight c1, I found this idea of going bishop f5 to not let her knight get out without trading with one of my pieces. So she went king f6, I played bishop c2, she played king e6, I went up with my king. It was time to get my king active. King activity is super important in endgames. She played king d5. I played knight e5 with the idea of going knight d3 and trading off the knight. And after she went bishop d6, I went knight d3 to trade them off. She took, I took. She played bishop back to b4. She only had like two minutes left now and we're playing this pretty fast. I was feeling really confident here, so I wasn't really worried. So I played king f3, she went back with her bishop to e7, and I started pushing my pawn. So I first pushed my f pawn, she attacked it, and then I went knight b6, with the idea of going knight c4 check, she played bishop d8, threatening my knight, and I found this idea of placing my knight on d7, and then my bishop on b5, and now the king could not get in. Because the only thing that was maybe a little bit worrisome was if somehow she was able to get the king to the queen side and push her a pawn and force me to sacrifice one of my two pieces, which still, that would be completely winning. But I wanted to make sure the king couldn't get in. I was trying to be as annoying as possible, and I think I succeeded. <laughs> so she went bishop g5, I pushed my pawn. She played bishop d2, I pushed my pawn again. She went king e7, I brought in my king. She played bishop b4, I brought in my king even more. The king is such an amazing piece. She played bishop c5, uh, c3, I played f6 check. The king went down, and now after I went e6, I'm threatening to go f7 check, and then f8 queen, and if she goes bishop b4, I have knight c5 check, and then I'm just gonna be making a queen. So in this position, she resigned. And that meant that I had won my game against Linda, and the only thing that I needed to get tied third was that I needed the game between Alexander Botas and Dina Belenkaya to be a decisive game where one of the two players won. And actually, Alexandra Botas beat Dina Belenkaya, which meant that me and Dina ended up on the same amount of points, four and a half out of seven, which meant that we won $1,300 each as we got tied third, or 1250 I think. So I ended up winning money at a price tournament, at a chess tournament, and this is probably like <laughs> the most money I've ever won in an over-the-board chess tournament. I don't, I can't remember a single other time I've won more money than this in a like over-the-board chess tournament. So I was really, really happy, and I also ended up gaining 21 points of rating. So this is overall a really great tournament. Gained rating, got a prize. I was overall really, really happy. So. This was the Botas Chess Invitational. I hope you've enjoyed all of the recaps and all of the games. And I'm going to include a little bit of footage here from the last day and also maybe a little interview with Linda. Thank you so much for watching all of these recaps. And my next tournament starts at the end of August. So I hope that you're just as excited as I am for me to be competing again. I really want to try to get 2100 feeder rating this fall. So that is the goal. Thanks for watching.
Linda, I just beat you. Are you mad at me? I'm not mad, as long as you get me the donut that you promised me. <laughs> I did promise you that if I beat you, I'd buy a donut. I'll buy a donut. I'm holding you to it. <laughs>